There are not many people who have heard the name Henri Dunant, but in his lifetime, this man contributed so much towards peace and humanity, yet remains largely forgotten. The following story is about Henri Dunant, the unsung hero. Henri Dunant was born in Geneva, Switzerland in 1828, and his family were devoutly Calvinist, a branch of Protestantism. His parents were influential in Geneva society and stressed the value of social work which involved helping orphans, people living in jail, the sick and the poor. Growing up in this environment would have sowed the seeds of humanitarianism for young Henri Dunant. Unfortunately for Henri, he was not particularly academic and did not pursue a university degree, but instead in 1849 at 21 started an apprenticeship with a money-changing firm that exchanged the currency of one country to another, and after finishing his apprenticeship, remained in banking. This trade was a predecessor of modern banking. Henri grew up religious and became involved in various Christian organisations such as the Geneva Society for Almsgiving, the Thursday Association, and in November 1852, founded the Geneva chapter of the YMCA. In 1856, he was granted a land concession to grow corn in Algeria, but things did not go to plan as the colonial authorities were not very cooperative. Dunar decided to appeal directly to Emperor Napoleon III, who was with his army in Lombardy in northern Italy, where France was fighting Austria. Napoleon was in the city of Solferino, and Dunar decided to travel there to meet with him personally. But it was this attempt to meet with Napoleon that would change Dunar's life when on 24th of June 1859, he arrived in Solferino as a battle between the two sides had recently been fought and observed 23,000 wounded, dying and dead still on the battlefield and in amongst the bloody chaos, nobody was caring for them. Dunar was totally shocked at what he'd seen and decided to organise some civilians, chiefly women and girls, to assist with the injured and sick soldiers. Unfortunately, they had insufficient materials and supplies, so Dunar organised the purchase of the necessary materials, as well as helping to erect makeshift hospitals. Dunar was able to get the people of the town to assist with the wounded, regardless of what side they were on. The women would coin the slogan, All Our Brothers. He was even able to gain the release of Austrian doctors who had been captured by the French. In July 1859, Dunart returned to Geneva to write a book about his experience called A Memory of Solferino, which was published in 1962, in which he described the battle, its cost, and the horrific circumstances afterwards. In the book, he argues for a future in which a neutral organisation should exist to provide care to wounded soldiers, and sent the book to leading political and military figures in Europe. Dunat then travelled throughout Europe to promote his ideas in the book, which received a positive response, where his recommendations were examined and assessed. A committee was formed to further advance the possibility of implementing his ideas, where Dumas became one of the members along with Mornier, President of the Geneva Society for Public Welfare, Swiss Army General Honoré Dufour, and doctors Louis Appiah and Theodore Monoir. Their first meeting on the 17th of February 1863 was the founding date of the International Committee of the Red Cross. In October 1863, 14 states took part in a meeting in Geneva, organised by the committee, to discuss the improvement of care for wounded soldiers, where Dunar was the main orchestrator and planner during the meeting. One year later, on the 22nd of August 1864, a conference organised by the Swiss Parliament led to the signing of the first Geneva Convention. Unfortunately for Dunar, his business in Algeria had deteriorated so badly that in April 1867 he became bankrupt, which led to a scandal that spread to his family and friends. Later in 1867, he left his home city of Geneva and never returned. This in turn led to calls for him to be separated from the International Committee of the Red Cross. On the 25th of August 1868, he resigned and on the 8th of September, was fully removed. Later in 1868, he was expelled from the YMCA. Dunar then moved to Paris, where his personal situation deteriorated. But he would not be deterred in his personal philosophy, 
and continued to pursue his humanitarian ideas and plans. During the Franco-Prussian War in 1870-1871, he founded the Common Relief Society and later the Common Alliance for Order and Civilization. He became involved in disarmament negotiations and called for an international court to mediate international conflicts. He later worked for the creation of a world library, which would eventually lead to organisations such as UNESCO. Dunar's personal situation worsened, leading to more debt, where he became further estranged from his acquaintances. However, this did not prevent him from becoming an honorary member of the National Red Cross in Austria, the Netherlands, Sweden, Prussia and Spain. Dunar was now in a destitute state, and between 1874 to 1886 had moved to various locations from Stuttgart to Rome, Corfu, Basel, Karlsruhe and England. In 1887, whilst living in London, his situation started to improve. We received some monthly financial support from some distant family members, which improved his standard of living somewhat. In July 1887, at the age of 59, he moved to Haydn in Switzerland. He would live there for the rest of his life, and on the 30th of April 1892, he moved to a nursing home. In September 1895, the chief editor of the newspaper, the Ostweitz, wrote an article about Dunar, whom he had conversed with during a walk with Dunar in Haydn a month earlier. The article was headed, Honoré Dunar, the founder of the Red Cross, that appeared in a German magazine and was soon reprinted throughout Europe. The article renewed attention and support, and Dunar received the Swiss Binet Fent Prize and a note from Pope Leo XIII. He also received support from Russian Tsar's widow, Maria Fyodorovna, along with other donations. In 1901, Dunar was awarded the first ever Nobel Peace Prize for his role in founding the International Red Cross Movement and initiating the Geneva Convention with the words, There is no man who more deserves this honour, for it was you, 40 years ago, who set on foot the international organisation for the relief of the wounded on the battlefield. Without you, the Red Cross, the supreme humanitarian achievement of the 19th century, would probably have never been undertaken. In 1903, Dunar was given an honorary doctorate by the medical faculty of the University of Heidelberg. He remained in the nursing home in Haydn until his death in 1910, and in the final years of his life, he suffered from depression and paranoia. He spurned and attacked Calvinism and organised religion generally. He died on the 30th of October 1910 and his final words were, Where has humanity gone? His birthday, the 8th of May, is celebrated as the World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day. The former nursing home in Haydn now houses the Henri Dunar Museum. In Geneva and other places, there are numerous streets, squares and schools named after him. The Honoré Dunant Medal, awarded every two years by the Standing Commissioner of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, is its highest decoration. In 